All right. I think it's uh, it's uh, you know just past seven. Uh, we will get uh, going with the talk slowly. I'm sure more people will join over the next few minutes. Uh, I think the thoughtful Tuesdays webinars that we were we are having essentially is to try and uh, stimulate interest within the pediatric surgical community to do things uh, more. I mean, a lot of standard things are covered repeatedly in conferences and various things, but some things are usually not touched upon. So we thought that this will be a good place for those kind of topics to be discussed. Uh, and also there is no pressure for a time so people can ask questions and the discussion can be more open and probably more fruitful. So with that idea, we started these and I'm happy that, uh, you know, it has been well, uh, it has been popular and, you know, well accepted. So today, as a part of this series, I have great pleasure in inviting uh, Professor Dr. Satapan, who is Professor Emeritus at the Tamil Nadu Medical, uh, MGR Medical University. He was formerly head of department pediatric surgery at Tanjavur Medical College. Uh, in Chennai, in Tamil Nadu, I think the pediatric surgeons uh, still do a lot of cleft work. I think from what I can understand, uh, Calcutta, Dr. Patapathin's unit, and then uh, in Tamil Nadu, I think students still get a chance to see this being done in their departments. Uh, so I think it is good that, you know, the interest here continues to linger and at least a few people, wherever they are, if they start doing this activity, then the students learn. The problem is if it's not being done in the unit, then the students don't learn and there is a hesitation to start it later on when they go into practice. Uh, so I hope that this stimulates interest and I hope that, you know, there will be questions and answers as we go along. Uh, so I take pleasure in uh, inviting Dr. Satapan and uh, ask him to please talk um, on management of orofacial clefts. Dr. Satapan, welcome. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Good evening, friends. Um, uh, first of all, let me wish you advanced Republic Day wishes. Um, I, before I start my speech, I should may express my sincere gratitude to Professor Sanjay Rao and Dr. Nabil for this wonderful opportunity given to me to meet all of you on this pleasant occasion. I think uh, you all agree with me, most of the pediatric surgical lesions are deformities involving various parts of the body. So, a pediatric surgeon should be well versed in plastic surgery work. That is a concept I used to have. That is true also. You take, for example, even if, an, if a urologist is operating a ectopia vesicae, he will be taking the help of a plastic surgeon for skin closure. Even my neurosurgical colleagues, when they want to operate a spina bifida occulta or spina bifida aperta, they would like to have a plastic surgeon by their side for the skin closure. So that means the pediatric surgical lesions needs a reasonable amount of basic plastic surgical knowledge. You all agree with me on this. In fact, I was telling Dr. Nabil that I will be happy to discuss on basic plastic surgical techniques for pediatric surgeon as I have given lecture in Chandigarh some years back. But he, he was keen on this particular topic, professional club, for the simple reason, this is the area which we need to try to get it back. That is what his idea. I am really very happy on that. And uh, it is true also, because you all agree with me how much effort you put on other conditions like hyperspadias and other malformations. And ultimately, when you see the outcome, sometimes you are totally depressed. So whereas in club clip and club palette, the effort that you need to put is reasonably smaller only. And the results are invariably wonderful. So that's what my experience over years. So it can be easily learned. So that is why. I thought I'll take up this topic. And uh, I, I, I definitely, in a short period, I, can, I cannot teach you everything. But I will create an awareness so that you will be able to take up this wherever possible. As we discussed earlier, 
in medical colleges if you have good relationship with your pediatric colleagues and if you start doing then they will refer the cases to you so also when one of the relatives op- get operated by you the sum of the relatives being there uh, relatives with similar problems this is what happens everywhere so i feel youngsters should get involved in this is a very simple thing that it's very reasonably easy to learn it so we will go for this uh, analysis of this uh, entity see this is one of, you all agree with me this is one of the commonest malformations in children and interestingly this cleft lip is more common in males i am really happy on that because even if you do smaller mistakes minor uh, miscorrection it can be easily covered by a mustache and other we can easily cover it and if you see the cleft palate is more common in females they are always talking you isn't it we would like to minimize this thing so i don't like to bore you with the embryological knowledge because i know how much effort you put in when you read embryology but here i just would like to tell you few things this is the median nasal process prominence this is a lateral nasal prominence and maxillary prominence any abnormality in fusion of this during the development results in this orofacial cleft that is what i want to highlight here classification of cleft lip and cleft palate like we have hundreds of surgeries for uh, hypospadias the classification also there are so many types but broadly it can be class um, classified in the typical and atypical orofacial cleft syndromic and non syndromic clefts this classification invariably it is carry this methods only so group a what is group 1 that is a here cleft involving only the soft palate group 2 cleft involving hard and soft palate till the incisive foramen group 3 group 3 complete unilateral cleft soft palate hard palate alveolar lids and lip on one side group 4 complete cleft lip palate uh, everything on both sides so this is a simpler and easier classification canavan striped wire classification also comparatively easier you see that soft palate it is number 9 7 and 8 hard palate lip 2 and 5 alveolus this is three maxillary primary palate while taking classification in the you need to know this three identity success involved whether it is involved only lip palate or alveolus severe that is complete or incomplete sides whether unilateral or bilateral so we have our own uh-huh. clinical classification i think this is simpler and easier and we were able to get all types into this group that is cl cleft lip incomplete or complete symmetric and asymmetric then cl a cleft lip and alveolus unilateral or bilateral then cl ap you see everything we are adding here each letter so cleft lip alveolus and palate unilateral or bilateral here if you see cleft lip and cleft palate with intact alveolus with intact alveolus we are reduced to one letter here clp so here the alveolus is intact again we are reduced to one more letter 
cleft palate either soft or soft and hard palate so this classification we thought it is more simpler and more clinically applicable and we we are using this entity in our department this is the incomplete cleft clip the diagnosis of incomplete cleft clip where you have intact nasal seal intact nasal seal is the diagnostic of incomplete cleft clip whereas complete cleft clip there is communication between oral and nasal cavity so that is complete cleft clip here if you see here it looks as if it is a incomplete variety it is not true you can see the communication between the nasal and oral cavity here this is known as simmer not band but this is the um, very what do you call blessing in this guys for this baby this prevents abnormal deviation of the alveolus so this is wonderful for the surgeon as well as for the baby so bilateral cleft lip asymmetrical as well as symmetrical asymmetrical this is this area you should know this is prolabium and pre maxilla so that is what in bilateral cleft lip you should understand see if you see this it's complete cleft lip with the palate with the alveolus involvement so this is unilateral complete you can see the entire cleft cleft involving the lip alveolus nose and palate similarly this is bilateral complete cleft lip and palate here the importance is excessive pre maxilla protrusion so that is very important for your treatment and invariably these children will have very small or columnar height so that is another problem we encounter so when it comes to secondary cleft palate cleft palate posterior to the incisive foramen there are two types one is uh partial cleft involving only the soft palate partial cleft palate whereas when it cleft involves both soft and hard palate it is complete cleft palate so this is another very rare but interesting entity It will be invariably brought to you for abnormal speech nasal speech here this is known as submucous cleft palate submucous cleft palate if we examine the throat you will see a white line here there will be failure of fusion of palate i mean uh, maxillary uh, palate in process of maxilla as well as soft palate there will be also occasionally very diagnostic recording and coming up up sub sub make club to ballot of course most of the pediatric patients would have come across this perry robin syndrome classical bird pick up here a deformity you have and club involving only sub ballot and usually the club uh, dr satapan your uh, video your audio is getting cut every now and again uh can i request you to just if you can just switch off your camera uh, so that only the slide is projected it might help yes, matter sure. so this there sir the see is here all the way i will stop the i will stop your video you will be able to continue to present this is the top floor you have to lots of light can you hear me dr satapan and down here is the basement this the arena what's still with it Yeah, please go ahead. Please go ahead. Hello, Dr. Sadapan, can you hear me? Hello. Yes, yes. Please go ahead. Now it is better. Yeah. Hello. Please. It's better. Yeah, please go ahead. Please go ahead. Yeah. 
Okay, am I audible clearly? Yes, you are audible clearly. Yes, yes. Please go ahead. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. I think so far we have. Uh, I think uh, I have discussed about this subbiscus cleft palate. I believe. Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, then say, can I go for next slide? Yes, please, please proceed. Uh, is is okay. I'll proceed. But yes. not known. It's. Uh, uh, um, it's. Uh, yeah. I, I'll just see. Yeah. Uh, I think. Uh, now I hope uh, you are able to listen to me. Am I audible to you? Yes, you are audible. It's clear. Please go ahead. Okay. 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 I'll proceed with further. Okay. So so far we have seen typical orofacial clubs. We come across a lot of. Atypical clubs, they come under embryological, not sexual, it's so only clinical, but the numbers are allotted in anti clockwise direction. So, these are the some of the rare facial clubs which come under disease classification we have seen in our department. You can see cervical clefts, mandibular clefts, and you can see angular or commissural clefts involving unilaterally or bilaterally, oculofacial cleft unilaterally and bilaterally, incomplete median cleft, complete median cleft, and median cleft with frontonasal dysplasia. So when it comes to the schedule of treatment, you will agree with me that treatment starts from birth, but it continues till adulthood. So that is the importance of this entity that all of us should understand. It needs multimodality and the involvement of various stakeholders. This rule of 10, most of the time we teach for undergraduates, club clip, Done at 10 weeks, 10 pounds, and 10 gram hemoglobin. And club palate, 10 months, 10 kg, and 10 gram. But with the availability of wonderful anesthetic backup, we have changed this 10 weeks to 10 days now. Now, most of our cases are done very earlier because the younger the patients, parents, they are very much worried. Nowadays, you get Compute results as our parents, I mean patients. So they want to have everything done as early as possible. They want to have a normal baby yeah. at the yeah. earliest yeah. time. At the earliest time possible. So we go for earlier correction. So now this is very important for pediatric surgeons. And I would like to highlight the importance of this important landmarks. Because if you start reading any monographs on club clip, you should know these basic words. These terminologies are written there. So you should understand this is a very important landmark. That is Cubit's bow. This is peak of the Cubit's bow on this side. This is the peak on this side. This is the crest on this side. This is the filtral column, and this is the vermilion border. This is the oral commission. Again, if you see this, this is the L of the nose. This is the nasal sill. Of course, this is the filtral column. This is the tubercle, where this both joins here at the crest of the cubit's bow. This is a white roll or white border. Is a vermilion. All these things are essential when you start reading any book on club clip. This is the terminology used. You should know clearly all these uh, terms. Only then you will be able to understand and highlight it. Again, I am repeating the same thing so that you are able to take it positively to your mind. 
you see here this is the cubic bow this is the peak of the bow on this side peak of this bow on this side uh, this is a filtral column so if you see here this is the tail of the nose nasal floor tip of the nose this is another important entity you see here the length is very important from this peak to the from this uh, peak to the base of the ala the length this length is equal to this length is equal to length so again if you see the same way if you see this length from commissural oral commissure to peak same way this length should be also equal so this is the importance of this anatomy again i would like to highlight the importance of orbicularis oris muscle this is very essential for the cosmetic effect of our repair improper repair will have improper result now let us see the morbid anatomy of the cleft lip this is very important as you have seen the normal anatomy how you see now you understand this uh, irregular attachment of orbicular sorry you can see the orbicular sorry is attached to the column on this side here on the nose on this side so this is very important thing that you should analyze when you are planning for your lip repair similarly you see here flaring of the ala of the nose as well as this lateral uh, sill you see it is attached very much laterally posteriorly and inferiorly if you see the column law if you see here it is height is very much shortened here there is flattening everywhere and the uh, um, if you see here uh, I, i don't know that you are able to appreciate this are you able to see this this the uh, column law is displaced to the non club side so we should know this change in anatomy slide not change you could yeah it's better now you can see the dot yeah 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 slide not change yes i again i think you will be able to appreciate uh... yes we are able to see the slide has moved we are seeing the morbid yeah. anatomy picture yeah. Yeah, yeah if you see the nasal tip it is displaced and asymmetric and uh, base of the columella is totally deviated to non club side and you see the horizontal orientation of the nos nostril and the uh, alar base is very much laterally displaced ah uh, hello yes sir please go ahead please go ahead there is some little bit confusion slide changing in this confusion okay sorry sir No okay now you can see this club uh, affected side this lateral crust is very longer and s shaped uh, similarly if you see the medial crust on the club side it is very very shorter and comparing the normal side slide movement is affected with this no oh, go
so uh, having seen the deformities in the both alveolus and maxilla we need so with, the, with those days we were not having adequate number of orthodontists now with the availability we are able to get it corrected with naso alveolar uh, molding appliances these are all some of the naso alveolar molding appliances grayson's device and loose device being used by orthodontists when it comes to surgical principles of cleft lip we should understand it is three layered closure skin muscles and mucosa you should approximate normal tissues and the exercise hypoplastic tissue the most important thing is reconstruction of the orbicularis or oris muscle so that is a very important entity we should also take effort to correct the nasal deformity also as we have multiple procedures for some of our procedures like hypospadias here also we have plenty of procedures but as taught by our professor miller's rotation advance when flap the very simplest and easy technique which doesn't need any form of instruments like calibers anything my professor used to say you cut as you go that is the simplest easiest and uh, it can be practiced by any youngsters so i wish all of you learn this miller's technique i do tennis and also but most of my 90% of my work is on miller's rotation only 10% where i have incomplete club clip i go for this technique it's not moving i do not know why our condition no sorry raja why is not moving Uh, these are the important essential essential steps that we should take it most important one is marking with methylene blue i'll be using insulin needle with concentrated methylene blue you should perfectly mark it that i will come to that later then when we infiltrate most of the text books describe one in two lakhs concentration but i have seen one in one lakh gives wonderful bleeding control so that is what i have practiced okay okay so um, then you make this uh, this one uh, that uh, points orbicular is r is reconstruction is very important uh, as i told you we should go for three layer closure and uh, then this cubits bow after your repair should be horizontal and then there should be continuity of the white line no notching on the verbilion so this is what miller's rotation advancement flap there are three flaps in it this is rotation flap this is advancement flap this is the c flap or columnar flap these three flaps are very easier and very important so this is what if you see here this is the rotation flap that is brought down the advancement flap goes and occupies this area this is a columnar flap that comes and occupies here so now i will spend few minutes on this marking this is very important to understand this technique you see here this is the oral commissure on both sides and this is the peak of the cubits bow on the non club side this is peak this is the crest of the cubits bow so this distance this the equal distance you mark a point here that that is the uh, peak of the 
Uh, it will be go on the non-club side. So this point is very important. Then another important point for the rotation flap is midpoint of the columnula. This is the midpoint of the columnula. So when you, this is the one important point. Other important point, when you connect these two line, it should not be straight line. It should be curved line. It should be a curved line as shown in the picture. Then you will have C flap here. You see here, C flap, you should go there. So this is the rotation flap. So this is the qubits, peak of the qubits bow on the non-club side. Crest here, equal distance. You mark the Q peak on this club side. Similarly, you can mark this side also. Then in our, our professors used to say it's very easy to you need not measure this distance also. If you see here carefully, when the leap starts becoming normal in um, uh, depth, you can appreciate this is the point where it becomes normal in size. So that is the point here. Then when you plan for this advancement flap, so this is the first point, then you take it to the uppermost portion in the skin in the nostril, then you take the point here, the check out point here on the lateral to the uh, LR base. This is the advancement flap. So here, I already explained to you the, where are the points that is to be taken. Here, I would like to highlight another important entity here. So this is the white line. This is the white line. See, this is the vermilion. If you see carefully, you will have the difference between this vermilion. This is whiter side. This is more on the finger side. So if you see here, you have to, to create a better tubercle. You need to go for this triangular flap. To accommodate this triangular flap, you have to make an incision here. So that is the point. I would like to highlight in this slide. So the rotation flap, you have to bring it down. Advancement flap, you have to take it in. So this is Millard's rotation advancement equation. See, if he, as I told you earlier, one and two will be equal to two and three. That is the distance between peak of the non-club side to the crust will be same distance on the club side. So that is the 1 and 2 will be same distance as 2 and 3. Similarly, if you see 3 and 4, that is from the uh, rotation flap length, 3 and 4, it should be equal to 9 and 7 advancement flap. If you have deficiency here, you can go for back cut here. But the back cut should never go to the opposite filter. You should limit yourself to this level. So that is the back cut you can go for to equalize this length. When it comes to 3 and 5, that is the filter length, 3 and 5, it will be equal to 1 and 6. Whereas this flap, if we see this flap, it will be lesser than this, this flap. So that is called a rotation advancement equation. So if you see here, the unwanted tissue will be excised. Then, most important thing is reconstruction of orbicularis or his muscle. This is very important stuff. Then you have to take the flap on both sides so that you get classical correction after this. So as you practice more on Miller's rotation advancement techniques, these are all our, some of our cases we have done. You can see the uh, reasonably good nasal and labial corrections. As I told you earlier, 
we do denison's triangular flap technique but we use it only for cases with the incomplete club clip where we are worried about lengthening the or equal length of filtrum on this club side number 1 and invariably you will have minimal distance on the nasal base very minimal disturbance so this technique wherein you have marked the peak on this side thrust on this side equal distance this is the peak on the club side similarly you have the peak on this club side so when you unite you have to create a equal equal length triangular flap equal length this will be equilateral triangle when you make a cut this will go and get accommodated you will get classical lower triangular flap then is an repair this is what you have we have to uh, mark the um, peak on this side and this triangular flap is completed this is what our sum of okay you can see here the correction is reasonably all right here if you see here we started using uh, buried subcuticular sutures so the, absolutely there will be no sutures and this child need not come for any suture removal and need not undergo second anesthesia so this is what you can practice when you feel there is minimal tension or no tension you can go for buried subcuticular sutures so bilateral complete club clip and pallet the problem major problem that we encounter here is abnormally protruded pre maxilla that is a major problem in earlier days we did not have the support of orthodontist so we were using this lip addition technique and we gone for stage correction when you have pre excessive pre maxillary protrusion and the books describe you can excise a portion of the omeral bone but subsequently later date mid facial deformity occurs so we don't prefer that but with the availability of orthodontist they go for uh, correction with uh, as i discussed earlier about naso alveolar molding devices or even they go for surgical correction and that helps us to go for single stage correction so this is what we have done single stage correction in a child with almost nil pre maxillary protrusion so again we use same millard single stage repair so millards we can use use for both unilateral as well as bilateral uh, deformities when you correct bilateral deformities you should understand these few important things this prolabium we use it only for development of filtrum with cubits four bow so this is the purpose of this prolabium this this very important thing then you should understand this orbicular sorisis get attached to ala this not muscle is not available in this prolabial segment it is not attached in this area so when you raise a flap you can raise a skin and mucosal flap separately and these flaps you can use for reconstruction <coughs> as we are done in the unilateral repair this is what you can see here see you can create that in the pro segment with cubits bow and the muscle is united you can see the mucosal flap and you have to close the mucosal flap this is a skin flap so now the skin flap is replaced and you can see the complete correction and this lateral flap we are used for reconstruction of the nasal seal so that is how we correct the bilateral club clip in single sitting so this is the bilateral 
lip prepare that we have done our, in our unit. You can appreciate reasonably good results. These are the rare club clips we have encountered, which I enumerated earlier. You can see this is the commissural lateral commissural club, unilateral side line repair, bilateral side line repair. We prefer invariably side line repair. We don't prefer Z plus because invariably it gives much visible scar, which we don't prefer. We have seen some of our friends discussing about Z plus C, but preferably, I personally don't prefer this um, Z plus C for this technique, for this entity. We go for straight line repair. Again, mandibular cleft, we are repaired. Oculofacial cleft, we are repaired with Z plus C. So now, when we discuss about straight line anatomy, we should understand all this anatomy thoroughly. This is the incisive foramen. So this is the pre-maxilla or primary palate. This is palatine process of maxilla. This is the actual palatine bone. This is the two important muscles. Tensor palatini, hooking the, uh, I mean, uh, uh, hamulus, uh, hook of the hamulus. Encircling the hook of the hamulus. And levator palatine, palatine muscle. So this is the greater auricular foramen through which greater palatine artery comes out. If you see here again, the palatine muscles get attached only to the palate. So that is very important. When you want to release the tensor valley, I mean tensor palatine muscle, you can um, bro break the hook of hamulus. You need to break it medially so that this muscle is relaxed for approximation in the midline, which is essential for proper speech. So the principle of surgical repair in cleft palate is watertight closure of the entire oral oronasal communication. That is very essential for speech as well as uh, regurgitation. Then, repair of musculature in the soft palate. So, the, there are multiple techniques again here, but for secondary cleft palate, that is re, uh, uh, defect posterior to the incisive forama, we always prefer pushback palatoplasty. That is, vaudeville killness, full pushback palatoplasty. The advantage that, that is claimed that, is, that we also seen is the willopharyngeal incompetence is almost nil, very few percentage only. So what you need is you create mucoperiosteal flap here as shown in the picture. Then you uh, create nasal flap. On the nasal side, you create the nasal flap. The entire palate is... Uh, the flap is created up to Eula on both sides. Then you start suturing the nasal lip and nasal layer, and the suture should be on the nasal side. Then you repair the muscles. Then you repair the palatal layer. So the defect will be there, which will be healing by secondary granulation after some time, near three weeks' time. So you should be able to reconstruct. And the reconstruction of the eula also plays a major role, particularly for the parents. They will look for that immediately after you are repaired. This is two flap technique. This we employ when we have complete cleft palate involving primary as well as secondary palate, as we have in cleft lip and complete cleft lip and palate case. So here, same principles. You create the mucoperiosteal flap on both sides, protecting the creating palatine artery. Then you go for creation of nasal flap. Then close the uh, muscular layer, as is seen here. 
after closing the nasal layer you can close the palatal uh, portion of the uh, defect so the importance here i would like to highlight here is the muscles are attached to hard palate that is very important that we should understand so when you plan for repair you should uh, you should separate these muscles from this margin of the uh, palatal bone this is very very important to get approximation in the middle so also when you want to release this tensor palatal you can break the hook of hamulus towards medial side so this step is very important and very essential for proper speech so this is what push back palate we do we close this with cards some people use gel foam whichever way you can do it so now before conclusion you see lot of fistulas even here also like you have in hypospadias but anyway i would like to highlight again for the youngsters this club clip and palate when compare with the other complicated surgeries like hypospadias or cloacal extrapy or ectopiasis or vascular malformation you take anything even in your anorectal malformation comparatively it is easier for you to learn this ndt once you understand the proper normal anatomy and abnormal anatomy as i have shown this and practice initially with one technique which you are familiar that is what most important you should go on repeating various techniques and i personally feel millard's technique for both unilateral and bilateral lip repair it is to me it is reasonably very good technique so whichever technique you are practicing you limit yourself your aim should be to give near normal external appearance so i wish once again that all of you should get right restart your work don't worry about number of cases people wants to start doing it people will recognize in our area i have plenty of pediatric children to be frank with you even if you ask my colleagues they will all agree with my statement but invariably pediatric surgeons will be recognized for this entity rather than plastic surgeons so thank you very much for your listening thank you very much uh thank you dr satyam and thank you very much for a very uh, detailed talk covering the basic things about the most common forms of cleft lip and palate uh thank you very much can i just ask you to stop sharing the screen so and we can probably put on the camera so we can see you okay okay uh, there are there are a few questions on the on the chat box which i will read out and you know, if you can answer and then we can open it up for discussion uh it says dr akshay is saying how do you deal with repeated corrective surgeries that is required through the follow up of the patient do you take plastic surgery reference for nasal corrections etc do you follow them up till adulthood and perform necessary surgeries for them hello yes this is the one yeah, yes sir am i audible sir yes you are you are please go ahead i think this is a wonderful question definitely it's a wonderful question because we occasionally get <clears throat> failed cases where needed you can take the help of your seniors for example my professors some of them are wonderful pediatric surgeons but wonderful uh, uh, doing wonderful work in this there is no harm in, there is no harm in seeking the help of your senior friends or plastic surgery friends absolutely no problem ultimately you should give good results number one number two if you maintain a good rapport i am getting cases even at the age of 25 26 when the patient is 25 26 they come to me and a smaller correction when possible i do it where i have difficulty i seek the help of dental surgeons so we do it we follow also okay 
VESU. So V E A U U three. If he has any idea. Uh, bilateral. No, I am prepared for bilateral lip. Yeah, no, but but as I told you earlier, I am familiar with uh, Millard one. Uh, Millard only, and I am happy okay. with that. So I am continuing with that. Okay. Shall I answer? I am I am Dr. Prabhakaran. Shall I answer for that question, sir? Surely, surely, Prabhakaran. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, then that that's a good technique, sir. Usually for bilateral cleft lip, I used to adopt that technique. <laughs> that's that gives an excellent result in case of bilateral cleft lip. I don't advocate um, bilateral Millard's repair in case of bilateral clefts. I used to adopt uh, the various techniques for the bilateral cleft lip. When it comes for a unilateral, I advocate either Tennyson or uh, Millard's. <laughs> ఎనీ <laughs> you need only 15 blades and 11 base that's what you were taught uh, you can uh, go for caliber you can go for caliber of course for uh, palatal repair of course you know that the uh, dingman's palatal uh, retractors are there i think everybody who is doing that they will be from here with this insman for lip repair when you are practicing millard as well as even tennis and you need only caliber okay uh, then they say what is the procedure to do for palatal fistula after push back palatoplasty you you can go for there are multiple techniques for this you can go for flap rotation depending on this the extent of fistula sometimes fistula is very very many numbers multiple fistula then you may have to consider redo um then there's a question about uh, you know it's by dr manoj joshi he says uh, cpcl management is a team approach we Not also done. work on antenatal diagnosis genetics etc uh, first part uh, second part is what is your preferred feeding technique while waiting for cleft palate repair param sir my question is not uh, clear to me yeah so what Maybe. is the what is your preferred feeding technique when waiting for cleft palate repair yeah that is so that's very important thing this is where other and district major role they have this uh, mm. as i shown you some of the naso alveolar devices they have that helps in the feeding in our early very simple what we, our teachers what we were doing We use to ask the parents to use spoon or ink filler because the child cannot uh, suck but can can swallow. So that is the principle. Even you can use feeding bottle with wider opening. So there is a all simple thing that you can do it. Now many new types of feeding bottles are available. But depending on the availability, I think you can leave this work to the other one. This who will take care of this nowadays. Okay. Uh, there are a lot of questions about smile train project about how uh, you know people who are interested can get involved and you know can at least participate and see these cases uh, would would you would you have first hand information about that otherwise uh, you know i'll probably ask dr partha if he's online where you having yeah, yeah. a smile train that. program uh, in your, in in your hospital అడ్మినిస్ట్రేటివ్ ప్రాబ్లం సో వి స్టాప్ ఇట్ Uh, nowadays is not easy to get uh, your partner treatment partner for the smile train otherwise you can go to the website uh, the smile train.org 
and there is a pro forma for the application for the treatment partnership with the company. You have to fill it up and apply it. The local regional director, the director, for example, in South India, Bangalore, we have a Leela Imam. She is in charge of uh, Tamil Nadu, Andhra, Kerala, Karnataka. I can give the number to people who wants. At the same manner, uh, overall in charge is, I forgot, the Mamta, Mamta Karol is the in charge for the India. So we can talk directly to them, but we have to basically, we have to apply through the website. There is a uh, there is a uh, column is available a treatment partnership application. There's a pro forma and it it mentions what are the things needed for the application. But generally, I feel nowadays uh, smile train is not encouraging more centers because of probably they also they are, they also having the problem in funding. Yes, uh, Dr. Partha, are you around? Would you like to comment? Dr. Sanjay. Yeah. I am Dr. N. Security. Yes, Dr. Reddy, please go ahead. So, my observation very few pediatric surgeons are doing cleft clip and pilot surgery nowadays. They are limiting themselves to other neonatal outlook. But I continue to do it because having trained in the clip and pilot in Holland Institute, I continue to do it. I think even plastic surgeons now, they are slowly going away from the clip and pilot surgery. He's gone into the armamentarium of a dental surgeon now, unfortunately. Orofacial, orofacial surgery, they call it. But I think as a period surgeon, we are justified in doing lip and palate surgery because we do handle only small tissues and those things. I, my suggestion to younger generation is please get yourself trained in lip and palate surgery and continue to do it. It itself is a big topic, lip and palate. Thank you. Thank so I get the inspiration from our speaker, sir. After consulting and getting inspiration from only I, be, I am doing in Salem. We do a lot of cases, almost 150 yeah. surgeries per year but without the yeah. help of Smile Train. Yeah. The previously, when I was in Smile Train, we were doing almost 350 surgeries. Now I am restricted to around 150 to 100 surgeries per year. Now the problem is for the younger generation and plastic surgeon, they are not interested in doing yeah. They turned their attention towards laparoscopy and robotic. Yeah, that's so true. I don't know the reason why <laughs> yeah. they switched over to that. Even you conduct a conference, uh, mm -hmm. if you put on slice on cleft lip, it's not welcomed by our younger pediatric colleagues. Yeah. But still, the laparoscopy, liver transplantation, and robotic gets a lot of uh, attention. I don't know why. But uh, I tell you, but lip and spallet surgery gives a lot of satisfaction for both the yes, patient. Yes, that I like. Family the one surgery and, gives uh, immense yeah. pleasure. Is and the cleft lip and pallet. And the, pallet. And the patient's parents are very happy after the surgery. We don't get that much of uh, pleasure from the parents in any other surgery. If you can find. Yeah, I think the, the challenge must, that most people have is to be able to find that place they can go and train. That seems to be the that seems to be the primary inquiry that most students make. So if I'm interested, how do I learn or who where can I go and learn? Is okay, Sanjay, place, thank you. Yes, sir. The best place uh, that I can go is Jubilee Mission Hospitals. And now Dr. Eden Vala is not there, but one Dr. Narayan is there. He is also good. So they train the people without charging anything. The second place is uh, Ramachandra. Uh, Dr. Josna also not there. She also expired. Uh, the other doctor, um, I don't know, the dental surgeon, uh, Mustaf, Mustaf, Mustaf. He is also helping the younger colleagues to learn. So the people have to go to the bigger center where they are doing regularly. For example, in Jubilee Mission Hospital, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturdays are the lip repair surgeries they do almost five to seven cases so if they observe continuously five to seven cases at most comes around 20 cases per week they we can learn i learned in such a manner i went to training and dr ed and Vala and learned something so the younger colleagues has to go to jubilee mission where they they don't charge i don't know about other places uh, and their volume is also high in north india they can go to kasi varanasi there is one center Doctor, I could not remember his name. That he does more number of surgeries than any other person, and he trains the um, people also. The Varanasi doctor, Sudip Sudip S. His name starts with S. 
he is doing lot of surgeries almost 1500 okay. surgeries per year uh, sorry uh, 10000 surgeries per year that's big volume how he gets the patients i don't know but he does almost 10000 surgeries per year now he is again now his number has come down but he was doing almost 50 he is uh, they he says always i have uh, 50 children 50000 children in my pocket per year Yes. I think Dr. Partha has uh, said that he runs a fellowship in the Institute of Child Health, Calcutta. Uh, would you like to elaborate, Dr. Partha? Sorry, it's not in the link. No, he was not able to get the audio. Oh, okay, because he has so mentioned only, uh, yes, he wrote in the chat box. Yes, sir, he is the only, only pediatric center available in associated with smile training is Partha. Yes, yes. And, so I think maybe those who are interested could reach out to him and there is a request for having some workshops, uh, you know, for pediatric surgeons on this. So I think, one, you know, the centers that do large numbers probably can arrange for, uh, you know, uh, this kind of thing, you know, in the coming months. And I'm sure it will have a lot of attention. Sathya Pansar himself has a lot of patients. So he can conduct the workshop. workshop yeah. Yeah. So maybe we can... He has a lot of patients. He does a lot of lip and penicillin. He's doing a lot Thank of you, lip brother. and penicillin. So if can... <laughs> sir, sir, you can do but you are the mentor. I think we should we should probably plan for a plan to have a workshop like this, which you know yeah. which would be useful. And uh, you know, I think yeah. uh, as you say, I think most of the time there is a transition. I agree. In in our hospital, also more than the plastics. I mean, we do a few simple, straightforward ones, and the more complex ones, you know, a cranio maxillary facial people do. So there is a fight between the plastics and the maxillofacial fellows about territory here. So I guess these things do. As change. another doctor said, I couldn't remember. One of the sad thing is the facial maxillary surgeon took over the cleft lip and pilot. Yeah. So here in case in our unit, it's the CMF team that that does it, and we do a few. So that, that's how that's how it that's how it works. I, I'm not sure it's sort of this varying. When I trained in Bombay, the 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 cleft uh, you know was all done by the plastic surgeons. And the hypospedias was done by the pediatric surgeons, and there was an informal arrangement that there will be no overlap. So all the pediatric surgeons would train in hypospedias, and all the plastic surgeons would not see it, and vice versa. So I think each place has its own peculiar way of distributing work. So and I guess it's it's who starts it and who's there at that time. So there was a very big famous plastic surgeon there, so he would do all the clefts. So. Uh, so yeah, but I, I, thank, I thank you, sir, because uh, for the nice uh, topic, uh, just an unfamiliar, <laughs> unfamiliar thing, uh, you have chosen an unfamiliar thing and made a wonderful speaker, Dr. Sathapan, to speak about uh, this cleft lip and pilot. He has a lot of experience. Uh, I think uh, in 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 our part of our part of the country, uh, Sathapan sir is the leading. It's almost he, his business are very good. And he does a lot of surgeries, um, more, more than I think anybody else. So maybe I think we should have a series of workshops in different regions to, you know, encourage youngsters who want to take it on, uh, you know, and, and I'm sure everybody gets referred an outpatient now and again, and it's a good thing to start doing. We got in, involved because these were all cardiac patients and they were not being touched in Smile Train and various other places very easily. And that's how they all ended up in our lab. And we sort of learned on the job and you know got help from when we started our cases so i think there is an opportunity and i think it is you know it's for youngsters to find find people to teach and i'm sure all of the people who have spoken here will be more than happy to participate reach out to dr satapan and you know and uh, try and we'll try and see if we can set up some workshops so that people can see and learn and interact in a more live manner uh, dr sanjay uh, yeah, Sandeep here. Yeah, Sandeep, we were fortunate enough to get all this training from initially from Dr. Upadhyaya and then Dr. Mitra and Dr. Patnagar. I mean, they were doing a large volume and uh, now myself and Bajpayee. But as, as everybody has mentioned, the younger faculty is not interested. Okay. I mean, I, I think it would die out with me <laughs> at the institute. But we are trying, we keep trying. But it's such a satisfying surgery. It's a simple surgery to learn. I don't know why, as somebody mentioned, people are more interested in laparoscopy and robotic surgery rather than <laughs> every part of periodic surgery is getting left over, yeah. left out. Yeah. Yes, yes. Sir, sir, Nabil over here. Sir. Can I give a, if not a youngster, but a junior surgeon's view on this, sir? If you you're a youngster, man. Go ahead. Youngster, sir. 
So, so basically, there's a lot of this thing going on that youngsters are not interested, and a lot of them are uh, very much they they want laparoscopy and robotic is what you're interested in. I think one thing I would like to say is that when we come to conferences, we see those surgeries, we see a lot of those presentations, and then those presentations are also done in with such a glamorous thing. We as youngsters are definitely more attracted to it. We hardly see any uh, work on uh, means very few presentations on lip and palate in the national conferences. And if you remember, I, I fortunately, I did, unfortunately, I didn't get to see any uh, lip and palate work during my training period. But I was fortunate enough to work with Dr. Sanjana, and that is where I saw my first uh, palate. And then uh, I really got interested in that. And I, if uh, Sanjay sir remembers, I, I used to assist him in all the cases, and I have. <laughs> I used to tell all the other consultants, please don't come for this. I will assist only Sanjay Rao sir in these cases because that is how the interest developed. So there are youngsters who are interested. Unfortunately, we don't have a place to train. So this is where uh, I think uh, the training part really, training as an even observing part really comes into play and seeing more of these cases in the conferences. After this, I remember I had approached uh, because Dr. Sanjay Rao said, Ki Tamil Nadu, they do a lot. I approached Dr. Velmurgan sir, who's the HOD of ICH uh, Chennai. And he gave, uh, he actually gave me a reference, which he has also written in the chat box of Dr. Narayan, uh, who was, uh, who was the right hand of Dr. Edenwala, who was the pioneer. And right now he's doing the main thing and he's a very approachable person. And he had told also, if anyone is interested, let me know. I will put in a word, you can go and train there. So we have mentors now who will uh, help us train. It's just a matter that you know, we should approach the mentor. So I would like to tell all my colleagues, we have a good uh, mentorship program here with all our IAPS thing. I think IAPS can also take it up, take it up if possible, formally or informally, as in, uh, so that this stays in our domain. Uh, there are quite a few people who are interested. We just need the right path on how to go about it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the time. Okay. I think I think that message is clearly taken. And I think, uh, you know, along with the people who are doing it on a regular basis, I think we will try and see if we can set up some mechanism to initiate, you know, a series of uh, training programs or a series of training things that people can go and attend. Uh, so I think that that's something that from our side, we will we will try and set up. So I think at this point, I think we will we will sort of call it a day. I think it's 10 past eight. Dr. Satapan, uh, thank you very much for a very, very nice talk. And for volunteering to come and give this talk, I'm, uh, it was it was really ideally suited for what I had in mind. So thank you very much, and uh, thank you for all the participants. Uh, I we will send out the next talk will be uh, uh, the details. I will send out in a couple of in a in a few days time. Uh, and so we will continue with this theme of having fortnightly meetings. So I I, I will I will uh, close here, Dr. Satapan. Thank you once again for your uh, you. for your uh, wonderful talk. Uh, this will be re it's recorded and i will put it up in our iaps uh, you know youtube uh, channel uh, once i complete the editing and things like that thank you very much uh, thank you and thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you.